Why, I believe that it's in the national interest for the United Kingdom to be a member of the European Union. Why, I believe we have benefited from that position for the last 45 years. And most importantly, why I believe future generations will benefit if we actually succeed in remaining a member of the European Union. It's a case that hardly received any national publicity during the extraordinary referendum campaign, but it does actually go to the heart of the historic decision that the House is being asked to make now. Uh, it so happens that my political career entirely coincides with British involvement with the European Union. I started over 50 years ago supporting Harold Macmillan's application to join. I uh, helped get the majority cross-party vote for the European Communities Act before we did join in 1973, and it looks like my last Parliament is going to be the Parliament which we leave. But I, I, I do not look back with any regret. We made very wise decisions. I believe that membership of the European Union was the way in which we got out of the appalling state we were in when, after Suez, we had discovered that we had no role in the world we were clear about once we'd lost our empire, and that our economy was a becoming a laughing stock because we were falling behind the countries on the continent that had been devastated in the war but appeared to have a better way of proceeding than we did. And I believe that our membership of the European Union restored to us our national self-confidence, gave us politically a role in the world as a leading member of the Union, which made us more valuable to our allies, like the United States, and made, us take, made our rivals, like the Russians, to take us more seriously because of our role of leadership in the European <coughs> Union, and it helped to reinforce our own values as well. And our economy benefited enormously and continued to benefit even more as the market developed from our close and successful involvement in developing trading relationships with the inhabitants of the continent. In fact, the Conservative governments in which I served made very positive contributions to the development of the European Union. There were two areas in which we were the leading contender and made a big difference. The first was when the Thatcher government led the way in the creation of the single market. Uh, the customs union, the so-called common market, had served its purpose, but regulatory barriers matter more than tariffs in the modern world. And but for the Thatcher government, the others would not have been induced to remove those barriers. And I think the British benefited more from the single market than any other member state. It has contributed to our comparative economic success today. We were also always the leading government after the fall of the Soviet Union in the process of enlargement to Eastern Europe taking in the former Soviet states, and that was an extremely important political contribution. After the surprising collapse of the Soviet Union, Eastern and Central Europe could have collapsed into its traditional anarchy, nationalist rivals, military regimes, which had preceded the Second World War. We actually pressed the urgency of bringing in these new independent nations giving them the goal of European Union, which meant liberal democracy, free market trade, and so on, and we made Europe a much more stable place. So that has been our role in the European Union, and I do believe that it is a, a very, very bad move, particularly for our children and grandchildren, that we're all sitting here now saying that we're embarking on a new unknown future, which I shall touch on a moment, but which I think is simply baffling every friend of the British and the United <coughs> Kingdom throughout the world. So that is why I shall vote against. Let me just deal with the arguments that I should not vote, that I'm being undemocratic, that this is quite wrong, and as an elected Member of Parliament, I'm under a duty to vote contrary 
to the views I have just given. And I'm told this is because we held a referendum. Now, uh, firstly, I'm in the happy situation that my opposition to referendums as an instrument of government is uh, quite well known and has been frequently repeated throughout my political career, and I made no commitment to it accept a referendum. I think uh, particularly this referendum we have such an enormous question being asked for a simple yes-no answer on one day with hundreds of complex issues wrapped up within it was a most unsuitable, particularly unsuitable question for a plebiscite of that kind. What I would point out to those who say that somehow I am being disloyal to my party by not voting in favour of this bill, I am merely propounding the official policy of the Conservative Party for 50 years until the 23rd of June 2016. I admire my colleagues who can suddenly become enthusiastic Brexiteers, having seen a light on the road to Damascus on the day that the vote uh, was cast on the 23rd of June. I'm afraid that that light has been denied me. There are very serious issues which weren't addressed in the referendum. They've been touched on. They're the single market, the customs union. And uh, that must be properly debated. It is absurd to say that every elector actually knew what the difference was between the customs union and the single market and had taken a careful and studied view on the basis of our future trade relations with Europe. So that it seems to me it is unarguable that if you put between us and the biggest free market in the world new tariffs, new regulatory barriers, new customs procedures, uh, uh, certificates of uh, origin and so on, you are bound to be weakening your economic position that it would otherwise have been, other things being equal, in future. Why it's, that's why it's important that that issue is particularly addressed. Now, what I'm told is that's pessimistic. We're combining withdrawal from the single market and the customs union with this great new globalised future, which offers tremendous opportunities for us. Apparently, you follow the rabbit down the hole and you emerge in a wonderland where suddenly <laughs> countries throughout the world are queuing up to give us trading advantages and access to their markets that previously we've never been able to achieve uh, as part of the European Union. Nice men like President Trump, President Erdogan are just impatient to abandon their normal protectionism and give us access. Don't let me be too cynical. I hope that's right. I, I do want the best outcome for the United Kingdom from this process. Uh, no doubt somewhere there's a hatter holding a tea party with a dormouse in the tea party. We, 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 we need success in these trade negotiations to recoup at least some of the losses which we are going to incur from leaving the single market. I always firmly believe that every MP should vote on an issue of this importance according to their view of the best national interest. I never quote Burke, but I paraphrase him. And he said to his constituents, if I no longer don't give you my benefit of my judgment and simply follow your orders, I am not serving you, I am betraying you. I personally shall be voting with my conscience content in this vote. And when we see what unfolds hereafter as we leave the European Union, I hope the consciences of other members of Parliament remain equally content. Yeah.